Hey, brand builder, Rory Vaden here. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out this interview. As always, it's our honor to provide it to you for free and wanted to let you know there's no big sales pitch or anything coming uh, at the end. However, if you are someone who is looking to build and monetize your personal brand, we would love to talk to you and get to know you a little bit and hear about some of your dreams and visions and share with you a little bit about what we're up to to see if we might be a fit. So if you're interested in a free strategy call with someone from our team, we would love to hear from you. You can do that at brandbuildersgroup.com slash podcall, brandbuildersgroup.com slash podcall. We hope to talk to you soon. So I recently recorded a story, a story of my life sharing three strategies for how I stopped drinking, which included, you know, why I stopped, how I stopped, you know, to, you know, to some, some very specific things. And uh, apparently I have more to say on this than I realized because I went longer than much longer than I expected. And so we have divided it into two parts. Um, part one was separate. And so we're going to play part two for you right now. Um, just as a reminder, you know, the three things are rewrite, redefine your identity, rewrite your programming, and then replace your choices, redefine your identity, rewrite your programming and replace your choices. And I talked specifically um, uh, about how to do these. Obviously, I started in the beginning in the first video. And in this one, we're going to talk more about how to rewrite your programming and how to replace your choices to make this behavior and really any behavior, any habit change that you want to make in your life, whether it's some type of a, a, a you know an indulgence or if it's just a new behavior of any kind. But if you want to create permanent changes in your actions need to be reinforced by permanent changes in your thinking. And so that's what we're talking about here in part two. I hope you enjoy it. I do want to share with you the two things for how I stopped, how I actually stopped drinking. Um, and the first one is really important. It was It's to rewrite your programming, rewrite your programming. Uh, and there's an entire chapter on this in Take the Stairs. It's called The Creation Principle of Integrity. And it talks about how our words are what are the the first step in creating our lives. Like your the human brain is a computer. It is a program. Your brain is happy to do whatever you tell it to do. It will um and and so here's what's important. Don't try to convince yourself to artificially not do something that you really do want to do. Instead, realize that you naturally um, won't do the things you don't want to do. So don't, don't try to convince yourself not to do something you do want to do. Realize that you naturally won't do something you don't want to do. So here's what I mean. If you, if you tell yourself, I love alcohol, alcohol makes me relax. Alcohol makes me happy. Alcohol makes me comfortable. I need alcohol because I had a hard day. If you tell yourself those things, they will be true for you. So when you when that is your base programming and then you try to change your behavior on top of that, it's in conflict because you're going, oh, I can't drink for 30 days because I'm on this thing or you know, I made a resolution. I'm not going to drink for a little bit. The, the issue there is your your mindset is the, is, is the behavior doesn't align with the programming. Underneath, you're saying, I like alcohol. I want alcohol. That's what the program is. And then you're trying to create behavior that is in, in conflict with that saying, but I don't want to drink or I'm not going to drink. So you're denying yourself something. The actual way to change your behavior is to change the root programming. Because if you convince yourself, I don't like alcohol, I don't want to drink, then it's much easier to have the behavior fall in line because you're not going against the programming of your brain. So this sounds incredibly simple and it is simple. It's not easy, but it's incredible, incredibly simple. If you want to stop any habit in your life or change any habit in your life or stop any negative thing, you have to attack the underlying programming. How do you do that? Simple. It's what you tell yourself over and over and over again. All you believe, you listen, your brain does not believe what is true. Your brain believes whatever you tell it most often. Whatever you tell it most often 
is what becomes true. I guarantee it. And so I want to read for you. I'm just going to read for you my, you know, I call these my alcohol affirmations, which they're really my non-alcohol affirmations. I just want to, I'm just going to read them to you because this is what I read to myself like every day for the first few weeks. And after a couple of weeks, I didn't have to read it anymore. My desire for alcohol disappeared, right? So um, here it is. Alcohol makes my body soft. Alcohol slows me down. Alcohol puts me in a less than optimum state to work. Alcohol makes me less likely to achieve my goals. Alcohol makes me sleep less. Alcohol weakens my decision-making. Alcohol makes me more vulnerable to a physical attack. Alcohol puts me at risk of a DUI. Alcohol increases my caloric intake. Alcohol increases the, the chance of me doing something dishonoring to my wife. Alcohol raises the likelihood that I will eat other bad food. Alcohol costs me money. Alcohol steals from my retirement. Alcohol gives me headaches. Alcohol affects my ability to be sharp and active the next day. Alcohol reduces my desire to exercise. Alcohol exposes me to disease and cancer. Alcohol is poison to my body. Alcohol shortens my lifespan. Alcohol risks my reputation. Alcohol sometimes causes me to say things I later regret. Alcohol sometimes causes me to do things that are dishonoring to my family, my team, myself, and the and the Lord. Alcohol has been involved in almost every single occurrence of my life's most embarrassing moments and deepest regrets. Uh, I don't want to have to drink alcohol in order to have fun, relax, or unwind. There are many people who I respect in my life who drink little or none at all. Uh, not drinking alcohol lengthens the length, lengthens the term of my effectiveness and my success. Alcohol might cause me to set a bad example to the people around me. And so if you will just say those things over and over again, I mean, that's what I did. It changes the programming. It replaces your programming in your head and it, it changes everything because now you're building new behaviors on, you're on a new foundation and they're not working against each other. They're working with each other. They're working alongside each other. And right, like the more I said those things, those that affirmations list that I just shared with you, the more I believed it to be true and the more I felt like it really was true. And the more that I felt it really was true, the less desire I actually had to ever do it. And so I wasn't like, I know where I am now. It's, it's weird to fast forward ahead six years and go, um, you know, who I was back then. It was like, man, I looked forward, like I looked forward to drinking. It was like the thing I was looking forward to at the end of the week, or even at the end of a day, like, gosh, I can't wait to just like go home and have a drink. And now it's like, I don't want it. I'm not drawn to it. it the, the desire is not there because the programming has changed. And so, you know, that's what I want you to really like think about with whatever change it is that you want to make in your life and, um, you know, replacing your programming. So, you know, first, first of all, you got to, you got to redefine your identity. Then you got to rewrite your programming. And then the last thing is, uh, is you got to replace your choices. And there's there's two key choices that I've made on this journey, at least for me, that um, were, were really pivotal. And they both uh, have to do with replacements. And so the first one was just literally replacing what I was holding in my hand and giving myself more options because uh, the, that's the, the hard part is going, oh, well, when I'm out at dinner, I'm used to holding wine and, or, you know, like I come home at the end of the day and it's like, oh, I, you know, I, I want to, I want to have a drink of some type. And so, you know, what I'm grabbing for um, is important to sort of have that replacement. So here's some simple replacements that made a big difference for me. So instead of drinking beer, drink Topo Chico uh, specifically was what I would do because it was a glass bottle 
and I would pop it. It makes the same, you know, it'd make the, the same sound as popping open a bottle of beer and then, um, you know, drinking that or sparkling water. Right. So sparkling water was a, was a, um, it, in, instead of wine, drink sparkling water. So instead of beer, drink Topo Chico is a glass bottle. Um, instead of wine, what I do is I drink sparkling water and then I will, uh, either add or sparkling apple juice or sparkling grape juice. Um, and that is like what, what I would have, uh, like even now when I'll go out to dinner, like what I'll order, oftentimes I'll order sparkling water with a splash of cranberry juice. And so it's super healthy. Often it's free, um, you know, like, or it's it's nowhere near the cost of, uh, of a cocktail. Now, if I really want a cocktail, what I will do is I'll order a mocktail. And so I, I, almost every bartender loves making mocktails because they don't get asked for it that often. And you say like, hey, make me something fancy or whatever. So if I'm at, uh, let's say we're in Mexico by the pool or something, you know, and it's like, I really want to have a something, you know, like I'll go, I'll, I'll, I'll have a, have a, have, have a fancy, a fancy mocktail. And that's just a simple, a simple replacement. So instead of beer, I had Topo Chico, um, instead of like wine, I'd have sparkling grape juice. And instead of a cocktail, I would get sparkling water with like a splash of cranberry or just, or just a mocktail. So those are easy choices, but the, the more, the more difficult choice and frankly, the more powerful choice and the more important choice was that for me in my life, there were two people specifically that I identified that I needed to replace. Um, not so much like replace the people, I needed to replace the time I was spending with these two individuals. And so when I looked back on you know the re regrets that I had and me being drunk, and then I looked and said, well, gosh, there's this very common thread that there's these two specific people in my life that when I'm around them, I am drunk. It's like sort of what we do. And it's it became the modality and the way of operating. And so, you know, rather than trying to change what they're doing or change their behavior, I just basically said, I have to replace myself out of that circumstance. And most of the time in life, I'm a big believer. Like I'm a big believer that usually you don't need to change your circumstance. You need to change your attitude. Like usually that is is what my default is and what even when I coach people and coach myself, like usually it's not the circumstance that it's is the problem. It's your attitude that's the problem. And so you need to change your you need to change your attitude, not your circumstance. But in this case, and whenever you're trying to change like a physical behavior, it's really important to change your physical surroundings. When you're trying to change a physical behavior, it's important to change the physical surroundings. Um, same thing, right? Like when, you, when you're trying to lose weight, I've been on that journey as well. It's like, I can't have chips and cookies and uh, bread and crackers and pretzels and everything just like a, a, right there at my disposal to grab because otherwise I'll grab them. Right. So I have to change the environment It's sort of the same, the same thing here, which is really tough. Um, these were two people in my life that it was like, we got together and we got drunk and, um, I can't do that anymore. Right. When I'm, when I'm making a change. And so what goal do you have in your life? What thing do you aspire to? Who are you looking to become? And it might be that you need to replace yourself out of a situation and you need to put yourself in another situation. You got to change your environment. You got to change your circumstance, like literally change your environment. And so that was, that was a big, that was a big thing for me. And so that is how I have done it. Right. And it, it hasn't been very hard actually. Like the first few weeks were hard, but the, you know, you redefine your identity and you figure out, okay, why does this matter to me? Not somebody else telling me I should, but, but why do I care? I listed my seven reasons uh, of what, why it mattered to me personally, you only need one, right? You just, but you need one good one that matters to you and you gotta be doing it for you. Like if you're making changes in your life because of someone else uh, or because you think you're supposed to, it's not gonna be sustainable because you're, it's, you're not changing your identity. You change your identity by changing your purpose and changing your why and deciding, I've got a reason to become a different person. And that's my reason, not yours, not someone else's, not some rule or some, you know, 
principle that I think I'm I'm supposed to uphold or do, but it's like a genuine, like I'm rewriting, I'm redefining my identity. Then I got to rewrite my programming, which to me is, is the most practical part of this. And it's reading those affirmations. And it might mean that you have to play this back, um, you know, play this recording back and just listen to them. In fact, what I'm going to do at the end is I'm going to say them again so that there you can, if you just need to like fast forward um, and um, you just want to play these, I, I'm, I'm going to read them again. And, and then the third thing is that you have to replace your choices. You got to replace your choices and give yourself art alternatives, be in different circumstances, environments. And um, I, I do have one last thing I want to share with you too. But um, before I do that, let me go ahead and read, read these affirmations for you one more time. Alcohol makes my body soft. Alcohol slows me down. Alcohol puts me in a less than optimum state to work. Alcohol puts me in a less than optimum state to compete towards achieving my goals. Alcohol makes me sleep less. Alcohol weakens my decision-making. Alcohol makes me vulnerable to a physical attack. Alcohol puts me at risk of a DUI. Alcohol increases my caloric intake. Alcohol increases the risk of me doing something dishonoring to my wife. Alcohol raises the likelihood that I'll eat other bad food. Alcohol costs me money. Alcohol steals from my retirement account. Alcohol gives me headaches. Alcohol affects my ability to be sharp the next day. Alcohol reduces my desire to exercise. Alcohol exposes me more to disease and cancer. Alcohol is poison to my body. Alcohol shortens my lifespan. Alcohol risks my reputation. Alcohol sometimes causes me to say things I later regret. Alcohol sometimes causes me to do things that are dishonoring to my family, my team, myself, and the Lord. Alcohol has been involved in almost every single occurrence of my life's most embarrassing moments and deepest regrets. I don't want to have to have a drink in order to have fun, relax, or unwind. There are many people who I respect in my life who drink little or not at all. Alcohol lengthens the time of my necessary working career to pay off all that it has cost me. And alcohol might cause me to set a bad example to the people around me that I care about. Here's what I want you to know. Today is the hardest it will ever be. Today is the hardest it will ever be. It is the hardest right now. The more that you play those affirmations back, you listen to them, you recite them, you repeat them, the more your programming will change. And it may be hard to imagine now, but I'm telling you it is possible that you will wake up one day and what once was something that all you wanted, all you could think about later in the future is something you don't even notice, you don't want it, you're not attracted to it. The key is to rewrite that underlying programming, not to try to lie to yourself and say, oh, I, I, you know, not to deny yourself something that really deep down you're saying you want and just temporarily disallowing it from yourself, but getting under the root and, and, and rewriting a program that says there's a different program here and I'm going to rewrite it because I want to be a different person, not for anybody else not for any other reason necessarily, but you're making the decision that you want to do it because something that's important to you. Now, there might be someone else in your life that matters, but it's it's not that that person's telling you to do it. It's that you're choosing to do it because that person matters to you. But this is the hardest it'll ever be. And I, I, I promise you that if you do these things and you think this way and you work in this direction, it will get easier and easier. So I'm not sure who this was for, but I felt called to put it out there. So whether this is for you, for a loved one, someone, please feel free to share it. And please don't feel judged. This isn't about judgment. This isn't about right and wrong and good and bad. This is just about my journey, overcoming something that I decided wasn't the right healthy thing for me and how I did that 
in case you or someone you know wants to make that same decision. Thanks for tuning in.